morning, I was accosted by three men carrying some poor soul's head atop a pike. Seems they mistook my uniform for a mark of nobility and demanded I shout, long live the Republic, to prove my allegiance. I suppose handing out tricolor cockades is now passé. What did you do? I shouted, long live the Republic. A man of principle. Life is more valuable than dignity. But this is what happens when you give command of the government to half-starved lunatics and command of the army to bloodthirsty savages. Rui. I wanted him assigned to some out-of-the-way garrison, but the man redefines the term friends in high places. He's untouchable. But you know where I can find him. Rumor about the barracks is that he and a unit of his cronies plan on marching on the Grand Châtelet this afternoon. If he were to meet with an accident, few in France would suffer. My career certainly wouldn't. Well, practice your speech making. Get their weapons. Nobody try anything. Come on, boys! Find me a warden!
What's the matter? Another fan of liberty? Freedom bores you? Tut tut, warden. <coughs> Your brother will think you rude. If you have orders to remove us from this hall, you must also get authority to use force, for we shall yield to nothing but bayonets! Ah, but to administer is to govern. To govern is to reign. That is the essence of the problem. Mr. Mirabeau. Pathetic, isn't it? Surely, France deserves better. What was that? Palais de Luxembourg. Roy, clean up your mess's tie. Told you I could make him talk. You've done well, Captain. Read. The price of grain is higher than ever, Grandmaster. Our agents are in place to divert the shipments to our docks. They await only your command. Good. Starve them. Through famine and fury, they will see their false masters for what they are, but do it gradually. What you're asking will take at least a year, Grandmaster. If not two. 